All right, so everyone should have uh, joined us now. So let's start this uh, webinar. So hi everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. So the topic today will be SWOOTCAM best practices. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Antoine Blondel and I'm in charge of business development for EFICAD in Europe, Middle East, Africa and Russia. So I will go through the whole presentation first. Uh, it will last for about 30 minutes and then I will take uh, five minutes to answer your questions. So please do not hesitate to ask your questions using the question tool of GoToWebinar during the presentation and I will answer all those questions at, uh, at the end. So to start, just a few words about uh, the webinar series that uh, we have started two weeks ago. So we have presented first uh, what's new in uh, SWOOT 2020. Then uh, you have seen an overall presentation. After that, the first step, the first steps with SWOOT, and uh, this week we present SWOOT design and SWOOT CAM best practices. So we are going uh, deeper and deeper at each webinar, each webinar, sorry. Uh, and next week we will present some uh, tips and tricks on suit design and suit scam, so don't miss that. Also, and just so you know, we should be able to continue with a second wave, let's say, of a webinar on the coming weeks too. We'll let you know uh, next week uh, if uh, we continue those, uh, those webinars. So also before starting this webinar, uh, I wanted to take a few seconds to give you a bit of a background about our company, EFICAD. So I believe it is important to understand where we come from and what is our experience in the woodworking industries. So as you can see here, uh, EFICAD was created in 1989. So back then it was a uh, uh, CAD CAM software, but only for education purposes. And at the very beginning, uh, only for uh, metal part. Then two years later, so in 1991, uh, EFICAD has uh, developed its first woodworking oriented CAD and CAM software. And 10 years later, so in uh, 2001, uh, EFICAD has uh, decided to change from a 2D platform to a 3D platform. And so we have uh, chosen SolidWorks and we have become a certified solution partner. Then in uh, 2010, uh, EFICAD created the first version of SWOOD, uh, which is our first commercial product in SOLIDWORKS for the woodworking industries. So we started first with the French market. And in uh, 2013, uh, we have started to expand uh, and we did our first sell abroad of SWOOD. Uh, last year, we have celebrated our 30th anniversary and uh, we have opened our first subsidiary in Boston, which is named uh, EFICAD America. So let's have a look uh, now at uh, today's agenda. And uh, as you can see, this uh, webinar will be split into six different parts. So I will start with a short introduction of uh, SWOOTCAM and its capabilities. Then we'll see how to manage tools on SWOOTCAM, how to create a manual machinings, then how to create an automatic machining strategy. I will present shortly our nesting module as well on the fifth part. And finally, I'll conclude with some information about the next webinars to come. All right, so let's get started with the SWOOTCAM introduction now. So as I've said, this uh, part is a short introduction about uh, our CAM solution, so which is named SWOOTCAM. Uh, so this is a CAM which is 100% dedicated to woodworking needs, which means that uh, with SWOOTCAM, you will be able to manage all your woodworking tools and aggregates, such as horizontal spindles, edge bending aggregates, groove saw aggregates, and so on. You will be as well uh, able to manage your positioning system with vacuums, beams, or clamps position. And finally, this is a CAM uh, system based on uh, geometry analysis, which means that uh, you will be able to create automatically your CNC programs. And this is what we'll be able to see today. A few figures as well regarding SWOOTCAM. So this is uh, 30 years of expertise in the woodworking industries in, uh, in one solutions. Uh, it can that goes up to five axis continuous and uh, more than uh, 700 success, successful implementation in 42 countries. So I will start here with a short uh, videos to present you what are the capabilities of uh, SWOOTCAM. And so to do so here, I've opened one of uh, my uh, SWOOT design, uh, one of my SWOOT design uh, projects, and I have opened here one of my panels. So here, the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a work table here. So as you can see, you can just load a configuration 
and the vacuums and beams will be placed automatically in the most optimized way. So now here you can see that uh, with Sweetcam there are different libraries. So here the tools library, we have as well an aggregates library, and here the machining strategies library. So here to give you an example of what we can do with that, I will apply just a few machinings here. So uh, contours, drillings, and pockets. And you can see that directly the shapes has been recognized and I'm able to uh, simulate my whole process. So here first with the contour. All right, then we'll see here the pockets. And finally, we'll be able to see the drillings with the drilling head. So you can see that it's very easy to create programs with Sweetcam for your machines. So with the last version, we have added as well uh, a new uh, possibility to have uh, simulation with material removal. So here, if I launch my simulation, so I will have first the contour, so I don't have a stock offset, so you won't see the material removal here. So I will jump here to the pockets, so you can see now that uh, one by one, uh, we'll be able to see the material removed from this panel. I'm gonna accelerate a bit here, and I'm gonna go with the drillings. And so I'm just gonna stop at the end because I will stop here my process before that I have all my drillings, all right. And so you will be able to see that uh, with this uh, new uh, simulation with material removal, we can as well compare the results of uh, our simulation with our SOLIDWORKS model. And here, for instance, you can see that you have some blue dots that represent all the uh, drillings that are missing. So you can very uh, easily see uh, what's happening on, uh, on your simulation. So now what I want to, to show you is that uh, we have a real associativity between Sweet Design and Sweet Cam. So for instance, here, if I uh, change the dimension of uh, my cabinets, so I will choose something a bit less deep with uh, 600 millimeters rather than 800 before. And now if I rebuild here, you will be able to see that the vacuums will be replaced. Then you can see that all the new uh, machinings has been updated based on these new dimensions, new positions of pockets, and so on. And I'm able now to simulate. So again, contour, pockets, uh, and drillings has been updated. All right. And then you will be able to see that all those simulations that uh, we can see has already been transcripted into uh, the programs for the machines. So here I've been using a WoodWop post-processor so for the WoodWop interface. And so direct, directly here from Swood, I will be able to open this program on the WoodWop interface. So I just have to click there. It will open here my WoodWop software directly on my computer and I will be able to check all my machinings directly on the machine interface. So here you have the contour, the drillings, the pockets and so on, everything is directly there. So you have seen here that uh, this cam uh, will allow you to create your programs for uh, panels and so on. But I wanted to show you as well that uh, we can uh, as well use Woodcam for uh, five axis machinings. So here, for instance, uh, we have uh, um, uh, a shell legs and you will be able to see that uh, we can uh, create as well some five axis machinings on it. So here with the new simulation with material removal so that will present a bit more on the next webinars, as I was saying will be able to here display the results. So with the waste detection and so on. And so, yes, this, uh, this is a, a solution that definitely goes from three axis to five axis continuously. So here you have the results. And after that, we'll be able to see as well the comparison with the SOLIDWORKS model. So again, here we can see that some drillings are missing. I'll present that next week. 
So just to conclude uh, on this uh, first part, as I have said, uh, we have uh, 30 years of expertise in the furniture industries. So we have worked on a lot of uh, different projects with uh, different process and different machines. So we have gained a lot of uh, experience, which means that we are now able to provide you a post processor for any kind of machines uh, of the market. So I've listed here some of the biggest brands uh, for which uh, we have post processors. So yeah, we'll be able to provide post-processor for any kind of machines. All right, so let's move on to the second part about the tools management. So on one of the first steps that uh, when we want to use a, a CAM solution, one of the first steps that uh, we'll have to do is create the tools library. So in this second part, I will present you first how to quickly create tools on SwedCam, how, how to create an aggregate such as drilling block, and finally how to replace a tool on an existing machine. So I have prepared a video to show that to you. So you will be able to see that here. So here you can see that if I go on the right on my SwedCam library, I have here a tool library. I have created here a folder for this webinar, and you can see that directly from here, just have to right click and go on new tools. I will just have here to define some parameters such as uh, the cutting length, total length, diameter. Here I define the, the head numbers, tool numbers. I will have to define here the type of tool that I want to create. So here I want a finishing cutter. I will define my spindle speed, feed rates. Here I have some uh, other parameters that I can define. I want to change them here, and you can see that directly here I have created this uh, this uh, first tool. So I'm going to change the name here to make it uh, more easy to identify it, and I will name it Milling D15 as it is a 15 millimeters diameter. So with this tool, you will be able to see that uh, we can create very easily any kind of machinings now. So here I will create a pocket machining. You will be able to see that we can simulate it directly from here. And it has created a generic tool, so like uh, with the cylinders. And now I will show you that uh, you can as well uh, change this uh, generic tool with uh, the 3D model of your real tool if needed. So here I have uh, a 3D model of this uh, 15 millimeters diameters uh, milling tool. And we'll go here on SwedCam Utility Save Mesh. I will create what we call an FE mesh of uh, this tool here. I will just have to name it exactly with the same name as my tool. So now I can just close that 3D model. I will just update here my machinings to be sure that it updates my tools as well. And now if I simulate, you can see that we have a simulation with the uh, real 3D mesh of my tools. So now that I have created my tools, I will create as well an aggregate. So to make it quick, I will create here a new spindles on a drilling block. So here, if I click on one of my spindle, so here you can see that you can add a new spindle. You can copy one as well here, and you can see on the right that you have all the tools parameters. So here I have created a new spindles. It has given a number here, so 36. I can change the rotation. Here you can see that by steps of uh, 32 millimeters, we can change the position here of the spindle. I will be able then to choose again the tools type. So here I will, for instance, define a through hole bit. Just as for the tool, you have then to create the parameters here. So the total length, the cutting length, uh, the, the diameters and so on. And you can see that just like this in a few seconds, you'll be able to create your uh, aggregates. Uh, and so now the last thing that I wanted to show you is how to change a tool on an existing machining. So here I will just have to go on my tools here on SwedCam tab. I will just open here my webinar. I have created uh, another tool which is a bit bigger. So I will just have here to click on replace tool in the current program, validate. It will update the trajectories and you can see that now I will be able to use another tool. So let's say that you want to replace, or if you have break tool or so on, you can replace it very easily on your uh, on your machinings. 
Uh, also, since the last version of Swood, we have as well uh, a tool that we have named the uh, Swood Tool Synchro, which is uh, for now an external tool, but uh, that could be implemented on Swood interface in uh, in the future. So this is a tool that uh, allows you to update auto automatically your Swood Tools library directly from uh, the configuration file of the machine. So as you can see here, this is now available for HOMAG, BSA, IMA, Masterwood, and also and uh, we'll be able to see how it works on the next video. So here on this video, you can see that on my Swoodcam library, I don't have any tools, I don't have any aggregates, anything. So I will open this uh, Swood tool uh, synchro. Here, I will give it a name of the library that I want to create. So here I will name it BSA. I will just have to choose now the kind of uh, configuration file I will input on it. I will then have to uh, uh, to, to put the, the data directory where I have my configuration file of the machine. And now, just by clicking on the sync button there, you will be able to see that it detects here that we have 42 tools, 81 aggregates on here. And if I just update now with my Swoodcam library, and updates, you can see that now all those tools that has been detected on my configuration file has now been added to the Swoodcam library. So the tools and the aggregates has been defined, as you can see here. And if I open one of my tools, you will be able to see that all the parameters that I had defined manually before here are already on these new tools. So the diameters, uh, cutting length, spindle speed, and so on, everything is embedded on it. So like that, you will be able to have an updated uh, Swoodcam library uh, on uh, based on your uh, machine configuration file. So now we have seen how easy it is to create and manage uh, its tools on Swoodcam. So now I'm going to explain how to create a machining and first how to create it manually. So how are we going to define manually a machining in Swoodcam? So it is actually rather simple. There are four major steps to follow. So first you have to select a geometry. So depending on the machining, it can be an edge, a surface, a body, for example. Then you would need to define the tools that you want to use, define the type of operation needed, and finally the parameters of these uh, machinings. Finally, and if needed, you can simulate the whole process directly on Swoodcam by using the, the simulation. So this is what we are going to see on the video here. So here I'm going to take the same pro project as the beginning. I'm going to open this panel and I'm going to show you how to create manually a drilling and a pocket for the example. So here I will select this cylinder so I can create my auto drilling from here. Or I can go on my Swoodcam tab. So here I will select my hole and I can select all the holes that I just, that have the same diameters if needed. Then I will have to define my tool here, the kind of operation I want to use. So here a simple drilling. Just have to choose the spindle here. So I had the eight, eight millimeters diameters holes. So I will choose the right uh, spindles here, I can change some parameters, and now you can see that we have defined here manually our machinings for this for those holes. All right, so now we have defined those holes. I will now show you how to define the pockets there. So I will select here the surface that are the bottom of my uh, of my pocket. Then I will select my tools again, the kind of uh, machines that I want to do. So here, pocket millings. You can see that again here, we have a lot of different parameters that we can change. So the trajectories and so on, the number of passes, lots of uh, different kind of uh, parameters that you can change from here. There you have as well some uh, other uh, parameters here if you are using a suction hood, for instance. And so now you can see that we have defined this uh, operation and that it was uh, rather simple. So uh, now you know how to create a manual machining on Swoodcam and we have seen that this is uh, relatively simple and fast. 
But when you have a lot of uh, panel or part with a lot of uh, different machinings to do, then all those steps will be time consuming. So this is why we are going now to see how to create an automatic machine. So let's start with a bit of uh, history uh, regarding those uh, automatic uh, machinings and all the needs that uh, we will meet with them. So as we can see, the two first automatic machines that uh, were available and that have evolved since uh, 2012 are auto drillings and uh, auto contour. Then in 2018, uh, we have added three new automatic machinings with uh, auto flat face for mitre cut, for instance, uh, then auto pocket and auto groove as well. Finally, last year, uh, so with 2019, we have added the automatic detection of uh, uh, lamellos and clamex shapes. So we can see that with this uh, broad panel of uh, automatic machining, we cover a majority of the needs in terms of machinings for the furnitures and the cabinetry industry. So uh, secondly, uh, one of the important things that I wanted to talk about here is uh, regarding uh, this uh, automatic machining, is that there are smart priority rules behind them. So what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, whatever is the order on which you are going to add your automatic machinings, the detection will always be made in a specific order. So the order is defined as follows, as you can see here. So first, the manual machinings, then the drillings, then the groove, then the pocket, contour after that, and finally, the flat faces. So typically, what does that mean? It means that uh, if you have a panel with pockets and drillings, as we have seen before, and if you apply uh, first an auto pocket machining, then the pocket and the holes will be detected as a pocket and will be uh, done with this auto pocket. But if you add, even if it is afterward an auto drilling uh, machining, then the holes will be drilled by the drilling hand and those holes will be excluded from the pocket detections. So this is why there are some priority rules to, for instance, uh, exclude uh, the groove and the drillings from the pockets uh, operation and so on. So to sum up about those uh, automatic machinings, uh, it will allow to create automatically not only machinings, but as also strategies. And this is what we will see on the next videos. Of course, it will save a lot of time as you won't spend much time to define your machinings. It allows as well to define machining strategies that uh, everyone on your company will be using, which means that you will have a unique machining strategy and that means as well, uh, of course, that you will be able to capitalize on the know-how on the company and reuse these knowledge easily. So let's have a look on how it works now. So I'm gonna use again the same uh, model. I'm gonna open the same panel, so we'll have the same machinings there. And I'm going to show you how I have created my strategy for the automatic drilling and automatic pocket. So here, the first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add my uh, drilling head aggregates on my uh, machinings there. Then I will just have to click on the automatic drilling. Here I can change some parameters. So for the example here, I will change the uh, Z security value and I will extend it to the row. So now I have created these strategies with this uh, Z security values and so on. And now you can see that it has detected all the holes and so on. I can as well just display the code that I just have created with my strategies. And now let's say that this specific strategy, so with the 10 millimeters uh, Z security, I will want to reuse them on other projects. So here I will give it a name. So here, as you can see, I have named it Webinar Auto Drill. I just have to uh, drag and drop it here on my machining strategies. And that means that now at any moment I will be able to reuse these strategies on any project. So here I will apply it again on this specific part. So you'd see how it works. And if I edit it, you can see that we have the same Z up and the same extension to the row that I had defined on my strategy. So that means that you will be able to define any kind of strategies and reuse them. 
So here I have shown you on uh, on the drillings, and now I will show you something as well interesting on the pocket, because you will be able to see that on one strategy you will be able to put different machinings. So here I have chosen two different millings. One is uh, 15 millimeters, one is uh, uh, five millimeters. So I will first do the pocket milling with my bigger milling, and now with the smaller uh, Cutter, I will uh, do a, a wall of pocket finishing. Sorry. So now I will define these two operations that will be embedded on my auto pocket. So here again the drillings, and then we'll see here the pockets. So first with the pocket milling, and then with the wall of pocket finishing. So these two uh, operations are embedded here on this auto pocket strategy that I had defined. So I just have to rename it to identify it easily. Here I'm going to name it webinar pocket plus finishing. Just doing the same, I will open my strategies there, drag and drop it on it. And again, I will be able to reuse this strategy on any project, any part, and so on. So here I will just delete my machinings and tools and you will be able to see that again here it will create the same strategies. So here on this video we have seen uh, how to apply uh, automatic machining by using drag and drop from the Swood library. Next week we will, be, we will see as well how to include those automatic machinings directly on your model without even opening your part with two different methodology. So yeah, don't miss the, the webinar next week if you want to learn more about those automatic machines. So let's now move on to uh, the fifth part, which is a short introduction on Swood nesting. So Swood nesting is uh, an additional module of Swoodcam. So it comes on top of Swoodcam and allows to create nesting projects out of your uh, Swood models. So this module allows obviously to optimize material as we can mix different projects with the same material to fill a nesting sheet. We can use fillers on those nesting sheet and so on. The nesting results are generated uh, automatically, but you have as well the possibility to customize the result manually. So let's say that you have a damage on a corner, you will be able to move the part on the nesting sheet and so on. And finally, you can use different strategies that will impact the results of your nesting. So let's have a look at this short video now to see how it works. So on the same project here, I will launch my nesting. So here I said that I wanted four uh, different uh, cabinets like that and that I had a 12 millimeters uh, milling cutters on my, on my uh, nesting machines. So now I have uh, had my results. I have uh, changed them manually. You can see that I can now display them on SolidWorks. It has created the SolidWorks assemblies. All the machinings as well has been embedded uh, as they were created as well uh, already on the panel. And now I'm able to create a report. So um, the, the workshop documentation here. So with the link to the program, I can as well generate labels and so on. So everything is embedded on this uh, nesting module. And finally, I'm going to conclude this uh, webinar uh, before I answer your questions with a short presentation of uh, what's next for the webinars to come. So on the last week, uh, we have uh, presented uh, different subjects that uh, I have talked about at the beginning of uh, this webinar. And so there are two uh, webinars left after this one next week. Uh, that's uh, the uh, Swoot Design Tips and Tricks and Swoot suit cam tips and tricks sorry that you will be able to discover next week on tuesday and on thursday so and to make you wanting uh, to make you want coming back next week i have listed here some topics that uh, we will develop on the next suit cam tips and trips webinar so we'll have information about uh, advanced five axis machinings you will be able to see as well uh, automation of machining creation as i was talking about with two different methodology 
you will be able to see how to import an external file. So it can be step file, EGS file, SAT files, and so on, and how to convert them to SWOOD automatically with the machining's operation and so on. You will be able to see as well the production automation with the SWOOD center. And uh, I will go in greater details about uh, the simulation with material removal to explain you a bit how it works and what are all the capabilities of these new uh, features of uh, SWOOD 2020.